Good day and welcome back to Chemistry Videos. My name is Clarissa Sorensen Unruh and today we're going to continue our discussion on statistics, which, as you know, has not much to do with chemistry except in higher levels of quantum mechanics. So what we're going to do is we are going to do, we're going to talk about the kinds of hypotheses that you can have. Now this is really kind of a loaded idea. Okay, so in statistics, this would be a loaded idea because it, when we talk about the kinds of hypotheses, we are often talking about specifically traditional kinds of statistics, and we're talking about repeating an experiment over and over and over again. So the two kinds of hypotheses that we tend to talk about are the alternative, The alternative hypothesis, or sometimes it's called the experimental hypothesis. It's often denoted as H1 or HA or H alpha. I tend to go with the H alpha. And then you have the null hypothesis. which is almost always across the board denoted H0, okay? The alternative hypothesis is your experimental hypothesis. When you run this experiment and you set up your control and your experimental groups and you are actually trying to test for an effect by manipulating that independent variable and then finding uh, some kind of, hopefully finding some kind of effect, measuring something with a dependent variable, then what happens here is that this is the, this hy alternative hypothesis is what you hope will happen or what you think will happen. Okay, this is typically in science the hypothesis that we deal with most of the time. When we say you should form a hypothesis, then this is what we're talking about. Okay, so it's the hypothesis that you want in the end. It's the hypothesis that details in the experiment what you think will happen. Oh, sorry, that should be within the experiment that oh, I'm still squeaky with the blue markers. Woo! Let's see if I can get my uh, lack of squeakiness back. All right. The details what um, effect will, will occur. through the manipulation of the dependent variable, which is a very long, sorry, of the independent variable, sorry. <laughs> Get my variables right. Independent variable is manipulated. Dependent variable is what you actually see, okay? Okay, that's what is actually uh, done in the end. Okay, and what's measured. In terms of when we look at this, okay, the, like I said, the, in science, this is usually the hypothesis we're going for. Okay, this is what we think will happen. So if I said for an alternative hypothesis that I think that when I test a sample, and I think that sample is incredibly reflective of the population that I'm looking at, perhaps I would say that the popu I think the population mean that's tested is different than the population mean that's known. Okay, so for instance, maybe I would say, if I were gonna show that, I would show the population mean that's observed is different than the population mean that's known, which is usually given by a naught. Okay, so often when we in statistics write these kinds of hypotheses out, we write them out in words based off of what the problem is actually asking, and we will write them out in mathematical notation, which is something like that. Okay, all right. Now, 
what is the null hypothesis then? The null hypothesis is the opposite of the alternative. And it's always the opposite of the alternative. This is the hypothesis that you hold true while you're doing the statistical test. Okay, so basically you're holding true the opposite of what you want in the end. And that's how statistics is done, folks. So, or at least traditional statistics, I should say. So if I, this is my, and we could say you observed or mu, it's not, not you, sorry, that's mu, the Greek letter mu. You, you mu statistics, whatever. Does, these are equivalent. Okay, you could also say mu s, you could say mu alpha, any number of things, right? Whatever is being tested. The null hypothesis is the, all, uh, is the direct opposite. Direct opposite of the alternative hypothesis. And I'll fill that out. Okay, so if this was my alternative hypothesis, then my null hypothesis is that mu observed is equal to the uh, mu, the population mean that's known. Okay, this is assuming, of course, that a population mean would be known. It's a pretty big parameter to know, but this is the assumption that we're making. Okay. In terms of the kinds of hypothesis, it is really super duper important to recognize that pretty much in statistics, everything is about the null. When we do the statistical tests, we are holding the null to be true. When we talk about the decisions that we use, when we make decisions in statistics, it is about the null. Okay, so we either reject the null or we fail to reject the null. The errors that exist in statistics are about the null. So, if you can write out whatever you're wanting to have happen in this particular experiment, then you should be able to write out the direct opposite as well and recognize that the opposite is actually what we're testing based off of in statistics. Kind of confusing, but if you kind of work with it for a while, it really becomes fairly clear. All right, until next time, I bid you adieu.